Hi everyone, it's good to have you back again. I'm Luke, and this is ThursDev. This week, I wanted to tackle something of an abstract topic in game development and design. A couple weeks ago, I received a request from one of our viewers to talk about depth in video games. Thank you very much, King Spoom, for the topic. I hope I do it justice. Now, the concept of depth is a huge and, if you'll excuse the low-hanging fruit of the pun tree, deep topic, and one that I've spent an awful lot of time contemplating as a designer myself. As my personal focus within my discipline places a very strong focus on systems design and the development of elegant game mechanics, the burden of depth in a game frequently falls on my shoulders. As a primer to the discussion on depth, I feel like the first thing we need to explore is how to identify it. How can we define it, and how does it differ from complexity, as those two are two very different things? To begin with a bit of a disclaimer, when I talk about depth in games, I'm tackling this with the specific intention of talking about mechanical depth. There are other kinds of depth, such as narrative depth, but in this case, let's just talk about what makes a game, as a game, deep. Let me begin with the definition as I see it. I describe it as a capability for extensive and varied player interaction with the game world over multiple applications of a single mechanic. I apologize for the word soup, I'm terrible at brevity. In short, or at least shorter, a game can be said to have depth if the player can engage with the game's mechanics multiple times in multiple ways without it becoming a repetitive task. Or even shorter, depth is the ability for the game to force a player to make informed choices. I don't mean to say that depth is the antithesis of repetitiveness, but repetitiveness, or the perception thereof, is symptomatic of a game lacking in depth. Conversely, a learning curve or breadth of mechanics that are too broad to allow the player to learn and exploit them is also symptomatic of a game's depth leading to frustration and confusion. Repetition can even be a very important part of creating depth as ultimately nearly every well-designed game boils down to some very finite set of specific loops, and a game that changes the way it plays every level or two is just as shallow and frustrating as one that does nothing but the same thing every time it's played. To the point, depth requires the player to think about their actions instead of autopiloting through them. The player has to be able to play the game easily, but not until they've invested a significant amount of time and thought into the game should they be able to just go through the motions in order to play successfully. Generally speaking, this requires a sort of elegance in mechanic design that can be extremely difficult to achieve, because investing too much effort into depth can lead to a game becoming arcane or convoluted, while not enough causes a game to become shallow and unchallenging. It's like entering orbit, free-falling around a stellar body at such a speed and angle that the orbiting object is neither descending nor ascending, but falling parallel to the thing to which it's gravitationally tethered. Too much or too little speed or angle will cause the object to come crashing back down or rocket out into the great unknown. What I mean by this simile is that a game can be both too deep or too shallow. To further clarify, I'm not saying that a game with too much or too little depth can't be good. Just that without depth, the game has no lasting power. Well, with a glut of depth, the game will risk alienating all but the most devout players. Allow me to give some examples of these extreme states to illustrate my point. Recently on our channel, we began to play the Sierra Online classic adventure game, King's Quest. It's a fantastic game and has a lot of historical significance to gaming on the whole, and it's just plain fun, but it's a perfect example of a game that, specifically speaking about it as a game, lacks any meaningful depth. This stands true for most adventure games, really with the only most notable exception being adventure RPG hybrid Quest for Glory. To each adventure game puzzle, there is one solution. Once you've learned the solution, there is no more question as to what should be done while playing. Aside from a few random elements, such as hostile characters randomly appearing, there is no variation in the game and you can play from start to finish without any need to consider any strategy. You could say this kind of depth is harmful insofar as it affects the overall replay value of the game. We play King's Quest not because we want to experience a deep gaming experience, we play it because we enjoy the aesthetic, a story, and how historically significant the game is to us. Once we've beaten it, however, there's no more real challenge left except maybe in finding all the points. The flip side of the shallowness coin is Doom. That is, the Doom of 1993, not the one released this year. 
Another very significant classic in video games, its mechanics are extremely simple and uncomplicated. Walk, turn, strafe, change weapons, click to fire towards the general center of the screen, and that's about it. Levels are fixed, ostensibly flat as the engine can only simulate elevation, and each time the location of the enemies and items within are the same. Enemy AI was predictable, weapons did fixed damage, and there was an optimized route that could be taken through any given map in order to finish the game in the most efficient way possible, which would offer no real surprises. Doom is an exercise in memorization and reflexes, and there's definitely fun to be had, but there's very little real depth in gameplay. But what about the other side, however? The Street Fighter games are extremely deep while still being completely accessible to the casual player. Each character has a completely different move set, with the exception of many of the Shotokan fighting style characters, who, though they each have their Hadouken, Shoryuken, and Tatsumaki Senpukyaku, still have differing stats. And each of the moves of all of the characters are more or less effective and can be countered by very different character strategies. Street Fighter is far beyond simple rock-paper-scissors mechanics, and being intimately familiar with the meta of the game gives each player a real edge, but still the potential to lose to more skilled execution. The games are extremely deep, even within their simplicity, and they manage their legendary accessibility through the game's core being a very uncomplicated concept. One-on-one -on -one battles with set health gauges, in later games a power meter that would fill to give the player the opportunity to execute a special powerful attack, the best of two rounds wins. Even a child can button mash their way to victory. But there's so much to be accomplished when playing Street Fighter that it even to this day continues to have competitive circuits. Oddly, the game I intend to highlight as an example of one of the most obtuse and harmful examples of too much depth is also one of my favorite games, at least in concept, and that's Dwarf Fortress. If you spent some time on the internet looking at information about any overly difficult or punishing game, you're likely to have seen the learning curve of popular games meme. Perhaps the name was changed to something else, but that started off referencing Dwarf Fortress, and with good reason. Everything in the game is controlled with multiples deep, nested, keyboard-controlled menus, and the bloated menu system is an absolute necessity because Bay 12 games have crammed in such detailed simulation to the game that any of your dwarves can be told to do any good number of tasks in any good number of ways. Each individual dwarf also has a complex system of thoughts and emotions, likes, dislikes, and health that's simulated down to discrete organs and extremities. To attempt to learn the game is not entirely unlike learning a new language, and you have to understand the way the game processes commands, how to build complex interconnected systems, and plan contingencies for raids, wild animal attacks, poor weather, flooding, famine, and any other myriad of possibilities. The game is deeper than probably any other that I've ever personally experienced, but far beyond its difficult for modern players to accept ASCII art exterior, it's a profoundly difficult to learn and perhaps impossible to truly master game. It's extremely complex, and that makes its depth nearly impenetrable. Complexity is a measure of a game's volume, if you will. Complex games enjoy many interweaved mechanics that all, or at least mostly, feed off of one another. Within the mechanics of a complex game, you typically see many variables, large amounts of equipment or a very detailed stat system, a 15-way rock-paper-scissors dependency chart, or a mechanic that allows the creation of one thing from another thing, and all the dependencies within that. Where depth gives us versatility in our tools, complexity is a toolbox. Each game has complexity, of course, but not every game is complex much in the same way that every game has depth but is not necessarily deep. And though the two have similar properties, complexity is the size or number of game mechanics, while depth is the ability of mechanics to provide a player with choice, regardless of their breadth. So what really is depth, and what is its benefit? A deep game does not a good game make, as we can see, but what does it really bring to the table? In my humble opinion, depth is the road to player engagement, and a game's replay value. Through depth, we allow the player an opportunity to experience the same game in entirely different ways, or to have a single playthrough that doesn't lose its luster for days to months, perhaps even years, as the player is never given the opportunity to become bored with a stagnating system of mechanics. 
Depth is the quality in a game that makes us, as a player, feel that we have an investment in the game. We're interacting with it as opposed to merely controlling it. And that's an extremely powerful thing that really only games as a medium possess. Is it necessary? Not in the least. Many things factor into what makes a good game good. But depth is the key to player engagement and investment, and ultimately longevity. It's the fountain of youth for a game. So before I wrap up, I'd like to think for a moment about, now that we've defined depth, how can it be achieved? It's one thing to say depth is a way for the player to interact with mechanics in a meaningful way and make informed choices and decisions, but how do we allow or facilitate that in our own designs? As with many of the best design decisions, it comes from approaching the game from the perspective of the player. Could you do it a hundred times and not always get the same result or get bored? Does it require a lot of thought? Could you use the mechanics differently to achieve the same goal and still succeed? Do the mechanics achieve anything meaningful, and do they yield anything special when applied well? If we keep these things in mind, and of course apply them in moderation, because moderation is important in video game development, I think we can at least get started on the right track to better, deeper game experiences. Thank you for watching. I'm always thrilled to see people enjoying my videos. If you're interested in hearing about a particular topic in game development, I'm always open to suggestions. Leave a comment below if there's something you'd like to learn about, and if it's within my realm of expertise or I can at least get enough information to talk about it confidently, I'll gladly put together another viewer requested video like this one was. If you enjoyed this, there's also a new episode of Thursdev every Thursday, and a more freeform game-related video podcast style episode of our serious Sunday show every, you guessed it, Sunday. Tune in also for daily Let's Plays, both retro and new, and be a part of our community. I really hope that you stick around, because there's always more to come. Thanks again, and take care.